Well, there were also those queens known as the warrior queens who actually went out and joined their troops in battle. Africa gave birth to queens like Queen Kandeka. ruled 80 clans who stood ready to punish those who had threatened her holy land. Leading her armies in personal command, she refused to give in to any demand. Legend has it, as Alexander the Greek prepared to cross her borders, this Empress of Ethiopia gave her orders. Now he has invaded and raided where his so-called philosophers Plato, Socrates, and Aristotle were educated. Egypt, Ethiopia's oldest daughter. It is no wonder he sought her, the stolen legacy. His claim a fallacy. The royal libraries of Wa'at, Waset, and Mayro belong to the land of the Pharaohs, the children of the sun, the land of the gods, of which he is none. As a result, let there be no further insult, or we will bring his so-called world-conquering rampage to a halt. At the first cataract, in the land of the blacks. Queen Kandaka, Queen of the Nile now. <laughs> oh, yes. For you see, there may come that time, sisters, when you have to join your troops in battle, and it may be now. Africa gave birth to queens like Nzinga, a death-defying diva, and visionary political leader. When she became queen of Ndongo, she organized the money Congo, baptized and by Portuguese missionaries. She was the first to realize the misuse of Christianity, conquest, church, and slave trade, all inseparable, all the same, the unholy trinity, opposed to African serenity. Her chief claim to fame she renounced her Christian name, survived her reign, and became an African abolitionist, her lifetime aim. Nzinga. Nzinga.
Queens of the Nile.